The foremost tool that comes with Kali Lynx can be used to do file carving on disk images. So for example, if you have a copy of a disk, a partition, or any other bit-by-bit -bit copy of a disk drive, USB drive, or other media like a camera, you can carve images, files, and other file uh, document types off of the image even if the file system for the image has been destroyed. So for example, a lot of times you can recover deleted files because the file system marked the file deleted but never actually overwrote the contents of the file. Sometimes though the file system itself is damaged or you have a partial image of a disk and the file system is missing. In that case, you may be able to find files by looking for markers that indicate the beginning and the end of the file. Foremost has a configuration file that has these markers inside of it that can help you locate the files. So if we look in the foremost configuration file and look at some of the graphics formats, we'll see as an example JPEG files. In the configuration file, those are marked as FF, D8, FF, E0, or the same with an E1, and that's the beginning of the file. For these same JPEGs, the end of the file is considered to be FFD9. And so the content between these beginning markers and these ending markers is considered to be a JPEG by the file carving software. And it'll automatically extract files between those two points. You can also see there's a marker for PNG that's looking for 54E47 and ending with FFFCFDFE. If you look at the entire configuration file, there's other formats inside of there as well. To use foremost, we need to tell it an input location an output location, and we can optionally set a few other options. The input file with the dash i option is just going to be the image. So in this case, we're going to look at an image that was carved from a USB. The output directory can be any name as long as that directory doesn't already exist. By default, foremost, we'll use a directory name of output but if the output directory already exists, you're going to get an error. You'll see that the output directory is not empty because we already have an output directory in this folder and that's why the error occurred. So what we can do is we can use a different name for our output directory or we can delete the output directory that's there. We can also specify dash V for verbose, which will cause foremost to print to the screen the activity that's occurring while it's running. So foremost has looked through 247 megabyte image and found these files, seven of which it considers to be JPEGs, two GIFs, and one OLE, which is a Microsoft Office format. If we go into the foremost output directory that's been created, we'll see one folder for each of those file types plus an audit.txt. If we look at the txt file, you'll see that it's a record of the activity that occurred while foremost was working, the same that we saw on the screen. Inside the JPEG folder is JPEGs. Those can be displayed. You can use the display program to display them. So 
So in this case, the first one is a picture of an alligator. GIFs are similar. You can use any program that'll display images, even a web browser, to look at the JPEGs and the GIFs. The OLA document is a little bit harder to deal with because we know it's a Microsoft Office format, but we're not 100% sure exactly which kind of Office document it is. The file program built into Linux can help determine the file type. And in this case, it does a real good job. It actually uses the same techniques to figure out what the file is that Foremost uses to carve the files. It looks for the beginning markers and ending markers for the file and has a list of markers that go with various file types. In this case, it prints out a lot of information and additional information about this file. And it says that the creating application was Microsoft Office Word. So we can create a copy of the file and we'll just call it file.doc we can save that to some place where we have Microsoft Office Viewer. In this case, we got a copy of Office Viewer over in a copy of Windows. So I'm going to put the file.doc into a shared folder. We open file that doc with the Microsoft Word Viewer, which is a free tool from Microsoft that'll let you look at Word documents even though you can't edit them. We can open up the document and read the contents as if we were in Word.